China is officially going down, and mostly I'm talking about its population. For the first time in more than half a century, China's population has officially declined and it's dropped by a massive amount, almost a million people compared to last year. It's a situation that is surely very worrying to the CCP and its leader Xi Jinping, not only because of how this will affect China's economy and wealth, but also how this will impact our entire world. So what is going on exactly? Well, in short, there is a big fluctuation to the numbers of China's population and it's going to impact all of us and our entire planet's economy. So let's talk about that, starting with what the numbers are saying for China's people. Just last month, China released its official yearly population figures. And for the first time in several generations, it was lower than the previous year, around 850,000 people lower, to be exact. In other words, reducing China's total numbers by more than the population of cities like Helsinki or Antwerp. And this is only the beginning of a downward trend. According to experts, China's population will continue to consistently drop. By next year, India will overtake it as the most populous nation on Earth. And year by year, it's expected that the nation will lose an average of 1.1% of its people. This means that by 2030, China will have lost an estimated 10.5 million people, or more than the entire population of countries like Hungary. And by the end of the century, China's total population is expected to be more than cut in half. If the estimates are correct, ending up with fewer than 600 million people. Now, obviously, this is big news. And the big question is, why is this all happening? And there is a relatively simple explanation for it all. For a nation's population to remain stable, about two children need to be born per adult couple. This is called the replacement rate. And anything below this means that a nation's population will decline. Around the world, birth rates have been dropping for decades. In Australia and the US, the current birth rate is around 1.6 children per couple. In Japan, it's even lower at 1.3, but in China, the number is only 1.15, meaning its population is dropping even more rapidly. This is partly due to China's one-child policy that was enacted in 1980, a formal law that stated Chinese families could only have one child in total, a measure designed to stop the country's explosive population growth. However, even though the law ended in 2016, Chinese families haven't really increased their desire to have more children. In fact, they've continued to have even fewer since then. The result is that China's population is is rapidly aging, with fewer and fewer new citizens being born. Or as the BBC put it, China is getting old before it gets rich. So why is it that Chinese people aren't having as many babies? Well, it just seems that they simply don't want to. Like everywhere on Earth, China's economy is based on growth. The growth of production and trading more with the outside world, but also the growth of wages and quality of life, with Chinese people expecting that life will continue to get better for them and their children. But that reality is starting to change. Although China's economy has boomed the past half a century, things are starting to slow, and the increase of life quality is starting to hit a plateau. For this reason, people are not necessarily seeing a much better life for their children than they had for themselves, which is partly why millions of Chinese people are choosing to not have children. And this decision is starting to create a self-fulfilling cycle, because economic life will only get better if more people are being added to the workforce, creating more wealth and prosperity for China. So fewer children will mean this plateau of financial growth will soon start to decline and hit all aspects of China's future financial success. Based on this trend, China's manufacturing orders have already dropped by as much as 40%. And by 2035, it's estimated its main national pension fund will be completely bankrupt, painting a bleak picture for the future of China and its people as a whole. Well, this doesn't just seem to be a problem for China, it seems to be a problem for all of us. And I am going to talk about that in a moment. But first, let's talk about how China got themselves in this situation in the first place. And it's got mostly to do with the government. China's government has total control over what is allowed in the country. For example, who companies are allowed to trade with. And as already mentioned, even how many children someone is allowed to have, Chinese people are also blocked from accessing tons of information from the outside world with the CCP heavily censoring the entire nation's internet. But this wouldn't be a problem if the people of China started using NordVPN, who I'm happy to say is the sponsor of today's video. I'm a big fan of people having access to whatever information they want, and NordVPN allows you to bypass basically any kind of online information blocks, whether it's as serious as stuff as your government doesn't want you to see, or something as simple as a Netflix series not being available in your home country. NordVPN has a ton of other incredible features too, like threat protection that defends you against online attacks. And unlike other VPNs, it won't slow down your connection either, because it's the verified fastest VPN service on Earth. If you sign up using the link below, you'll receive a bonus month of NordVPN for free, but also to celebrate their birthday, you're going to receive additional subscription time as a gift for all two-year plans. And as always, joining NordVPN is risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee.
guarantee. So join today by clicking the link in the description. Okay, so now let's talk about the consequences of what China's imminent population decline will be. And it will affect China, of course, but also the world at large, including you. Japan's population has been on the decline for more than a decade already, losing around 3 million people since 2010. And it's expected to lose another 20 million by 2030, only eight years from now. With its population dropping, Japan is already seeing a reduction in the price of housing, as there are fewer people to buy the homes that already exist. And the country is seriously worried about its pension funds running dry in the near future, due to smaller working age population and a rapidly growing retiree class. Overall, Japan is due to become significantly significantly less wealthy in the coming years, as a smaller number of people contribute to its economy. In all likelihood, these are the same challenges China will face as well, just on a much larger scale. But here's the thing, while China is going to be the biggest loser in relation to the drop of the population, other nations will win big as a result. As I already mentioned, India is said to surpass China as the world's most populous country only next year, and with its growing population comes a massive boom in its economy. India has rapidly become wealthier over the past few decades, recently surpassing the UK as the world's fifth largest economy, and according to some, could one day even knock the US off the top spot as well. Another winner that will profit off China's losses will be Mexico, a nation that's already winning loads of business that once automatically went to China. Over the previous years, China's manufacturing costs have risen significantly higher than those in Mexico, causing many US and European nations to pull their business from China, not only to save on costs, but also due to Mexico's closer proximity to the countries buying from them, as well as the fact that the West has generally grown more suspicious of Chinese espionage and corporate theft recently. This trend of business leaving China will only increase as the nation's population falls, as fewer workers will mean fewer companies able to fulfill foreign orders, further reducing China's wealth, power and influence over the globe. Now, a lot of people in the Western world are happy to hear this news because to nations such as the US and other nations, China is an enemy and whatever is not good for China is obviously good for us, right? Well, not so fast, because it is not just China that will be suffering from a decline in population. It seems that this is coming your way as well. Around the world, birth rates are declining almost everywhere, especially in the developed wealthy worlds. In the United States, the birth rate is currently sitting at around 1.6, which is below the necessary rate of replacing the population, meaning the US population is already starting to see signs of a plateau. In the European Union as a whole, the birth rate is even lower at around 1.53. And it's the same story in Australia, New Zealand, Russia, Iceland, the United Kingdom and Canada, where not enough people are being born to keep a population stable. And at the very bottom of the list is South Korea, with a current birth rate of 1.1, a situation so severe that the nation's government is paying families to have children, but providing them with a monthly allowance for every newborn. While most of the countries mentioned haven't yet started to see a decline in the population yet, it's likely only a few years away or a decade at best, simply due to not enough people being born to replace those that will inevitably die. But there are some other places on earth where birth rates are still high, primarily most nations in Africa and some in the Middle East. Whereas Europe is struggling to produce 1.5 children per adult couple, Africa isn't experiencing the same issue. In Tanzania, for example, almost five children are being born per adult woman. And at the top of the list is Nigeria, which is producing more than six children per woman, meaning as the population of China and the West declines over the next few decades, the population of Africa is set to explode. Long story short, the world is in a bit of a weird position because we're all expecting the population of the world to increase, but judging by statistics, this looks like this is not going to be the case in the future. In simple terms, the world's money and wealth are going to be drastically changing over the next few decades and the power shift will come along with it as well. But I'd love to know your thoughts about this whole situation. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and subscribe. Also, we have an amazing newsletter of over 75,000 people that are receiving extra financial nuggets wrapped up in beautifully written stories into their inbox. There is a link down below. And also we have a private membership with all things finance and freedom link down below. And I will see you in the next one.